our land? I'm still not quite sure. Western Australia's new Aboriginal cultural heritage laws introduced this month, which aim to protect culturally significant sites, are literally hundreds of pages long. I provided links below if you really want to look through them. But they're not written for the average person to understand. They are legal documents. What I just showed you was just the contents page. It literally took me 36 hours to read through the entire act. I'm joking, but it did take me a couple of hours just to skim through it. Unsurprisingly, landowners, such as farmers, are confused and outraged over these new laws. They said they're even willing to march at Parliament House in Canberra to voice their concerns. The new laws essentially force farmers to pay for costly surveys whenever they wish to do basic farm works, such as erect a fence or create a new track or sink a bore. It's hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per day, depending on who needs to inspect your land. You just better hope that you don't need the CEO to come out, because they cost $2,100 a day, and you have to pay for their accommodation and meals and travel expenses as well. Oh, it's a money-making business, this one. You'd think if the true intention was to protect Aboriginal cultural sites, they'd make it as cheap as possible for farmers, or even free. But instead, some of these people are getting paid as much as, or more than, a surgeon. And why should all these costs be dumped on farmers anyway? It's almost like the government want the farmers to quit. Where would we get our food from then? Also unsurprisingly, these new laws have strengthened the no vote for the upcoming voice referendum, which if passed would result in the creation of an indigenous advisory body to parliament. If these current laws are a sign of things to come, then of course people won't have a bar of it. Despite the new laws being confusing and hundreds of pages long, you better obey, because if you don't, you could potentially go to prison for five years and have to pay a fine of up to one million dollars. But just to be open and honest about the new laws, after skimming through them myself, there are a whole bunch of exemptions. Luckily, the government have created some handy fact sheets with all this information. Most notably, residential lots less than 1,100 square metres are exempt, so that's pretty much most residential land. For farmers, they're basically allowed to maintain existing infrastructure and fire breaks without permission, as well as replacing fences, running livestock and cropping on established farms. The government also provide a specialised fact sheet for farmers and pastoralists. They refer to these laws as simple and fair, but from what I've heard from the farmers, they're anything but. Here's some examples they provide. Felicity notices one of her sheep is stuck in a fence on the far side of the paddock. She drives across the paddock to get the sheep out of the fence. Is there anything Felicity needs to do under the Act? No, Felicity can tend to her sheep. Thank goodness, that would be a bit crazy if she wasn't allowed to go tend to an injured sheep. Clayton wants to create a new track through one of his paddocks, which has been used for cropping for many years. He needs to use a grader. What does Clayton need to do? If there is no Aboriginal cultural heritage on Clayton's property, he will not require approval under the Act remembering that Clayton has to pay somebody to identify that. A normal person cannot identify sites of cultural significance. Us mere mortals don't know what we're looking for. If Aboriginal cultural heritage is present, no approval would be required if the track does not require clearing. So I guess that means if clearing is required, then approval would be needed. Chris is installing a bore on his property. It's pretty much the same thing noting that it's been reported in the news that there have been quotes of over $100,000 to conduct a survey for a bore to prove that there is no Aboriginal cultural heritage present. ka -ching! That's a lot of extra money for a farmer to fork out, especially for something that they get zero benefit from. The only benefit, really, is that they avoid jail time. Oh yes, these laws are very coercive. And here's one more example of how complex some of this stuff can get. June has noticed some pest cotton bush in some uncleared land on her property. She wants to remove it before it begins to spread to her fields. Easy, right? Wrong. The first question for June to ask herself is whether Aboriginal cultural heritage is present. If it is not, or it can be avoided, she can proceed without seeking any approval. Further, if June is preventing or minimising irreversible damage to a significant part of the environment, the activity would be exempt. 
If Aboriginal cultural heritage is present but the risk does not meet the irreversible damage threshold, controlling feral or pest fauna without digging or excavating is a Tier 1 activity and would not require approval. June will need to take all reasonable steps to avoid or minimise harm to Aboriginal cultural heritage. If digging or excavating is required, June will only need to apply for a permit in the unlikely event that, over the course of one calendar year, she will remove more than 4 kilograms of material, not counting the weeds or flora, disturb more than 10 metres squared of ground in total, disturb more than 1 metre squared of contiguous ground, or excavate to a depth of more than 0.5 metres. Simple and fair, right? Wrong.